But for those who want to save time <laughs> and money and get to where they want to go with the goals they set, I highly recommend <laughs> this system and uh, working with a coach. And, and that last point is really important. I think uh, you could you could get Metronomics, you could get the book, you could read it, you could study it. And then as a CEO, you could start applying it in your own business. Welcome to Tip Top Growing Up Your Business with Metronomics. We'll be talking to business thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and CEOs and business team coaches who have all taken the journey to grow up their businesses to their tip top. We'll be sharing strategies, systems, and stories on how you can grow your company at the speed you want. If you're searching for your path to your tip top and you feel time is running out, then this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Shannon Susco, with Jed Roberts. So you will all know Shannon Susco, the creator of Metronomics and the author of M-Game, Metronomics, Three Hag Way, and the metronome effect. Shannon, of course, is the normal host of this podcast. But from here on, we'll be mixing things up a little bit. We'll both be hosting, sometimes together, sometimes by ourselves. The same great guests, the same great topics, just with different hosts every now and then. So, Shannon, how does it feel to be a guest on your own podcast? Well, I love it. I love that you're here with me and that you're going to be working with me on this podcast. And being a guest on your own podcast is like being a guest in your own house. This is going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. And I'm so excited to explore metronomics with you. And in the spirit of who, not how, we've each found each other's who's here. (laughs) Absolutely. It's all about who, not how. And we coach that every day. Every day we talk about who, not how. So this is a perfect marriage of working together on really bringing value back to all of you who are listening in to learn from the CEOs, to learn from the leaders, to learn from the thought leaders, and of course, to learn from coaches on how to grow your business and take it to the very tip top that you want. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks. So this episode is about metronomics, what it is and where it came from with the episode title, What is Metronomics? But before we go into that, can you take us through your journey up to now? How you got here? Oh, wow. That's a journey, all right. But if we make it into like five segments, there's a segment of growing up as an athlete and a crazy academic person. I love school, three degrees, played varsity sports, all of that. Played high performing sports on a few different teams. And then, you know, you leave school and you need to find a place uh, that you can call home. And I ended up in Whistler, British Columbia, building my first business. And that was Paradata Systems. And that is where Metronomics was born, frankly. Uh, Metronomics was born out of the pure desperation of having a great opportunity, a great thing in front of us, lots of investors and cash, and we couldn't figure out how to get there. It's all about the how, as we know. We had all the thought leaders, we had coaches, we had uh, you know, a really great leadership team, but we just didn't know how to pull it all together. So Metronomics uh, was born there. It took us on a 10-year journey in my first company, selling it in 2006, so 1995 to 2006. I had to do time, what I call time on the other side in the company that acquired my company. That's sort of, uh, I, I call a little bit of a part two. Part one was learning to growing up as a CEO and building a high growth company. Part two was going on the other side with the acquired company. But part two is where we got to implement metronomics into a large private organization and really, really confirm the benefits of it. And again, they grew up and sold that company for a half billion dollars. I actually left that company and started another company. So that's part three called Subservio. And we used Metronomics from day one to the day we sold it, which we sold it on our three hack. Three years, 12 quarters, sold it on the value of the next three years. So that was part four. Part five is all about giving back to CEOs 
and to coaches who want to make an impact with high-growth CEOs in how to grow their business using a system that consistently gets the growth and the results you need. That's my five-part journey, and I love being on this part of the journey. So at some point through your journey, you must have realized the tools and the techniques that you were building through Paradata and through Subservio, that they were, they were different and they were filling a gap other growth systems were not really filling. At, at what point did you realize that there was a business operating system in the making here? When, when, did, you, when did you realize that this was something that was worth documenting and also teaching to others? You know... It wasn't till part five. So, you know, I got to be, you know, business school, computer science school, all of that. I then got the great opportunity to work with a team to grow up, you know, Paradata Systems. I take it on to the company that acquired, take it to Subservio, you know, come out coaching. The interesting thing, I actually became a coach because I got a call from a CEO who observed all of this, you know, growing up a company, selling it. And then we grew up another company and we sold it within six years of one another. And they were still slogging it out, you know, as the way he described it, we're slogging it out for a little growth, putting in all this time and they're tired. And he called me and he said, I would really like you to coach us. And I was actually not a coach. I didn't plan on doing this, none of it. And he goes, and I asked him why he was calling me, and, you know, because I had retired. Um, and he said, I'm calling because I think you have a system. You must have had a system in order to do that, not once, not twice, you know, three times. And then we took it into the second, you know, the second company who acquired ours and they used it as well. He said, I just think you have a system. And it was at that point that, you know, I, we had to look back and reflect on it. And it was like, yeah, we absolutely have a system. We've done this consistently over four different companies. Two, I was a CEO and two, I was not a CEO. And it really, and so it didn't matter. The team did the thing that was consistent was the system. And so I give a lot of credit to this CEO who called me up and I actually asked him what kind of coach he was looking for. He wanted a system, but the second thing he was looking for, you know, I said, what kind of coach are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for a coach that will come and coach me, the CEO and my leadership team. And I was like, yeah, that's the kind of coach I wanted. That's the kind of coach my coach grew into didn't just coach me, but coached me as a CEO with my team. It made all the difference in the world to me. And so I was so happy to hear that he had picked that up. He had heard me speak before and tell the story, but picked that up along the way. Because if he had a set of CEO only coach, I would have said no. If he said an executive coach, I would have said no. If he said a life coach, I would have said no. Because I don't know how to do those things. I do know how to coach the system into a team. And so that's like where it was born, even though, you know, we used it in Paradata, we believed in it. The company who bought the company was like, we want that too. So, you know, we implemented in that company. Second company built it with the system. And then the company who bought ours, DST uh, Systems, they actually used it in the division that we were a part of. It. So public companies, private companies, small companies, large companies, it just works. Why? Because there's people involved. It's balancing people and things right the way through the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Balancing people and things. And the other thing that I think a lot of, I took a lot of grief for, because you know this, but I, you know, I say as an entrepreneur and CEO, I was born and raised in Whistler, British Columbia. And a lot of people gave me a hard time that we were in Whistler, meaning that like, do you ever get work done? Are you, you know, really spending time working or are you just skiing and all these things? But it was all about, you know, the cliche, honestly, was balancing team with your business, team and business. We know that's connected through the three hag. And it was, if those two things were in balance, then you, your life was in balance. And it sounds cliche, but it's really true. And if you're listening in, that if you think to the times where you're most out of balance, you worked more hours than you thought you should, it's usually because you, your team was out of balance or your strategy, your execution, your cash was out of balance. 
One of those two things are out of balance and you end up putting more time in that takes away from your life. Mm -hmm. And as the system came together, I mean, yes, it evolved. Yes, it, um, you know, it morphed a little. But if you look right back to the pictures that you were using at the beginning, it, has, it actually hasn't changed that much. The things that you put in place early on, oh, I love they, that. they haven't really changed that much. I mean, we've put the words around it. We've documented it. But the systems yes. and the tools, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, I love that you you just said that because the one picture I was talking about the other day with someone that I knew back in the early 2000s was the house diagram. And the house diagram for listeners who may not have seen the house, it's all about the foundation, the walls, and then what's in the house and what's at the top of the house. But, you know, and I'll describe it the way we drew it. We are trying to decipher the systems involved in metronomics, and we drew it as a house. And I don't know why we drew it as a house. I, I really don't, but the house lives on. And so the foundation of the house is the CEO that's, you know, the absolute foundation with the cultural system, which is, you know, why you exist, your core values that system is the absolute foundation. If that doesn't exist, your company will crumble, actually. And we've seen it. You're a coach. I'm a coach. We've seen it. We've lived it in business. Absolutely seen it. The walls of the house, we had the cohesive system, you know, making sure that the team, you know, team trust, healthy conflict, uh, commitment, accountability, and the team result over individual results, that system is in play. The other wall is the human system. A clarity of expectations that, you know, totally grew out of, you know, when I think back to the day of playing sports is clarity of who's doing what, right? And who owns what and who's accountable and who's responsible. At the top of the house, you know, is the team, the leadership team and the team, right? And so there's your frame of your house. If any one of those things aren't in place, actually the house falls down. We know that. I have no idea why we built the house, but it actually played really well when we were all talking about it with my leadership team. Inside the house and is, you know, strategy, execution, and cash in a nice engine that has to work together and is tied together with a three-year highly achievable goal. The funny thing is when we look at it, the outside of the house is your soft edge systems, is the systems that are all about the team. And if we don't have the right team, right? Doing the right things in the right roles, right? It falls apart. And if they're not cohesive and all those things, it falls apart. We know that people fall out either side, but inside the house, if strategy isn't aligned to execution and execution is aligned to cash, those are the hard edge systems. And everybody focuses on those systems. And it's the balance of the two that keeps us alive. That picture the host diagram is the one. It exists in all four books. <laughs> you can't live without it. I don't ever coach without it. Um, and it allows us as coaches and as CEOs and leaders to really understand and address the things we're feeling when we were playing human whack-a-mole in my first company, you know, doing a little bit of cohesiveness over there, a little bit of human systems over there, a little bit of cultural system, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And we're running around constantly. The, this allows us to connect the systems. And that diagram of the house just tells the story uh, that we're trying to balance those two things. And there's so many nuances of that particular diagram. There's quite a few others that just haven't changed mm. from, you know, and I, I think back to 1997, they just haven't changed. And I'm a visual learner, a visual thinker, and that's just where the pictures come from. Yeah. I did a kickoff uh, with a client um, a couple of weeks back. And as we were going through, I think it would have been about 9.30, maybe 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And that function chart slide still has the names of the original Paradata members. You know, the hasn't, yeah, it uh, hasn't yeah. changed. And if you take uh, the metronome effects, now there is an early version of the house. And you know, there, there's, the, there's the paradox, the foundations and the walls are the soft systems. You know, so there, that's where the strength is. That's where the support is. That's where the people are. But people often get confused between the soft and the hard. And the irony is, you know, it's the, it's the soft systems in business that are hard because it's all about people.
Yes. And it's such great irony. And we know, I know is coming in and starting out as uh, a coach of CEO and leadership teams. And I'm known for my strategic expertise, but I know I can't get to strategy until we get the team, right? People in the right seats at the leadership team to start. And of course, the rest of the team, but you have to start with the leadership team and you can't get to strategy without doing it. I think I spent, well, as much time coaching strategy as I have coaching team. And it's just the soft edge systems and the hard edge systems, but there is a critical path through how we build our team to grow a company. And many CEOs, they just want to drive towards strategy. And sometimes you have to hold them back because they they think they can go faster than they can go. Now, now why, why, why can't we do all of strategy in the kickoff? And it's that you, you can't tell them, but they're not ready yet. The team isn't ready to do that yet. And if, and if you do do it, then you've got to redo it anyway, because it's going to be wrong. It's interesting because we know, you and I both know, we get lots of calls from CEOs who needed a strategy yesterday for many different reasons. And, you know, we know we can get them there with speed, but there are certain certain things in our path that have to be right. And we do know that as we iterate on strategy with our clients, you know, as we take those round and round and round we go of the strategic system, um, that each time it's going to get better. As we actually bring the team along, the soft edge systems, as they grow up, the strategy will grow up and become, you know, truly confident and differentiated if we can do that. But it takes time. But everyone comes to us for the hard edge systems. And uh, it's really hard. I don't know about you, but I, it's really hard to uh, tell a CEO right off the bat. And, uh, you know, that we, of course, we want to work on strategy, but there's a few other things we need to do along the way that's going to really improve the outcome. And at the end of the day, it's all about the outcomes. In that same kickoff, kickoff I was referring to just a moment ago, I think we are on day two. This is probably the first time the leadership team had had a, a full-on difficult discussion about the targets they were going to set over the year. They were having a debate. People were changing their minds. They were sort of you know, putting their own views out there and they were being persuaded. And um, the, the CEO said, Jed, can you just stop for a minute? Now, normally, if a CEO says that, it's bad. But he jumped up and he said, I've been in business nearly 30 years. This is the best business experience I've ever had. I've got to take a photo. <laughs> so we paused. Okay. We See, love that. Did a, took a selfie and then carried on. Went back into the difficult conversation about, you know, is it this number? Is it that number? And why is it this number? And why do they think it's that? And, and uh, yeah, you, you, you get the team involved. And if the team isn't involved, they're just not, they're just not committed. They're not part of it. They, they don't feel they've had their voice heard. Yeah. And one, one of my favorite meetings, and, you know, I know I was talking about this on social media not too long ago, is the kickoff, right? I love the kickoff because it gives a chance for everyone, everyone on the leadership team to weigh in on all the key pieces from, you know, our cultural foundation, the core purpose, core values, through to where we're going to be in 10 years, where do we have to be in three years? And this day two is about one year and 90 days. But by the time you get to day two, I loved how you said it, you know, they're having a good, you know, healthy discussion around the priorities because they're pretty comfortable and they all have the same view at that point and where they're going. And they agreed upon as best they could in that day one on where they're going, but it's usually so needed and so like overdone, meaning it was needed, you know, months and months ago, that one aligned view. And every time we get together with our clients, we know it gets better and better, the alignment, and which then drives the healthy discussion. So Shannon, there's, there's numerous components in all of this, the system that we call metronomics. There's the books, there's the, there's the system itself, there's a coach community, there's the company. But I wanted to wind it back and go right back to the first book and set the context for metronome effect and then the next book after that. So, and now j jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, my understanding is the metronome effect is, is 
focus mainly on the execution system. Now, it is pulling together some of the key tools. You know, it touches on strategy, it touches on team, but the main focus is around execution. So the metronome effect was the whole system at a, uh, the street version of how a CEO put it in place. It had all the systems in it as we talked. The same uh, graphics are in every book because that hasn't changed. It's just the perspective actually changed. And metronome was effect was written from a CEO street level. This is how we actually connected everything. And it's, you know, probably not as thoughtful as maybe the later books because I was writing it just for CEOs. So they knew that, yes, there's that execution and cash system, but here's how we linked it to strategy. And I think, you know, in that book, we didn't even talk about the three hag because I thought everyone had a three hag and I was last to the party. I mean, that's that's how naive maybe I was. I felt pretty left out on that. And then it went to the three hack. Yep. So you, you felt left out. You were last of the party. So you wrote another <laughs> book, Three Hag Way. Yes. Uh, so the, the Three Hag Way was documenting the strategic system. It was the, I'm hesitating now, you know, no, so it was, it was documenting the strategic system, the uh, what what I call, I'm not sure if anyone else calls it, the three hag wheel. Now, the the the, the steps that you go through to formulate strategy, uh, and uh, that that was that was the book that made me sort of you know, prick my ears up because suddenly I had laid out in front of me a system, a process, a framework in which to formulate, evolve, and refine strategy, and nothing out there at that time had that. You know, so that book for me was the one that made me realise. There is really something here. There is something different in this. Now, this is interesting. This is different. Yeah. And how naive were we to not include it in the first book? And then I have many coaches ask, because I talked about it, and as I worked with different coaches, uh, you know, they kept asking what the three hag is, explaining it to them. Can we have it? Yes, we give it to them. And then the success they had was the same as what I had with my clients. And then one of their clients was on a stage at a growth summit talking about this, you know, the reason for their success was the three hag. And I was in the audience. I almost fell out of my chair, honestly. And the coach, you know, waved at me and was like, yeah, you know, a thumbs up. I was like, wow, that is so cool. I left that day and said, I better write that down for everyone because we wrote books to give it all to anyone who was stuck like I was. And lots of people are stuck on strategy. And that book came out around 2018, I seem to remember. 2018. Yeah. Uh, and 20, yes. 2018, I think, was, was two years after I first met you when I did my scaling up training in Atlanta. Now, yeah. And that. Yeah. The Three Hagway book at that point was, you know, we were all at the conference, um, New Orleans. Um, it was a very interesting conference for a variety of reasons. Uh, <laughs> that, but that, that to me was when a group of coaches first started coalescing, a group of coaches that first started coalescing mm. uh, who, who, had, who yeah. had, like me, seen that there was something different here. And, you know, and, that, and that group is the metronomics group of coaches that we have right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, shockingly, a great group came out of uh, that conference after reading that book on their way home, actually, and, you know, called me soon after and said, you know, we want to be certified in this. And I was like, well, that's sort of ridiculous. It's all written down. You should read it, use it, enjoy it, make an impact with it. But you know what? You know, those coaches kept calling. And uh, my team said, you know, according to our own core purpose of our organization at that time was, you know, we didn't want anyone to be as desperate as I was to grow a company. And this would be an exponential impact if we could train coaches from around the world to use the strategy system mm -hmm. that's connected to the soft edge and the hard edge. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. And the three hag is what zippers it together. It absolutely zippers it together and is actually why, you know, 
we know one another so well. We have this great community of coaches that are global around the world who are all implementing the system. Well, then a few years later, another book came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so we now have a book, an organization, a, a system, all called Metronomics. So that really brought it together, didn't it? Because where we're, you know, where we're we three Hagway, where we're Metronomics. So it was good to get under a single label at that point. That wasn't an easy book to name, but we we're going for a name that could, you know, be the playbook, be the system, be the company, be the community. And, you know, that word is made up out of three words. There is a fancy word for that, but I can't remember. And, you know, the metronome is one of the words which represents the CEO who is the metronome. Um, then we have economics, which represents sort of the 3D value that comes out of this, balancing your company, your team, your life, and investing less dollars and getting to where you want to be sooner. And then the third word is uh, metrics, which represents that connection uh, to your team of the widgets that they control in your business. And that's where the word metronomics comes from. So we have the cadence set by the disciplined CEO of whatever cadence you want to set, however fast or slow, uh, what you're going for for an outcome, which is a nice balance between value and your life and your time and all those good things and your team. And then in the middle of it is the thing that your team and your self controls are only the things that flow through your business that you measure through a metric, which is known as a widget. And that's where the word came from. Now, the interesting thing about the book Metronomics, I, after writing a book, the first book, I didn't want to write a second book, but I felt like we should give that out, the three hag way and how it impact, already made an impact without being out there. Metronomics took me a little bit more convincing actually to write. And it was written due to the community of coaches we had that, you know, they were all certified in the strategic system, but people kept asking me and saying to me, you seem to be doing something more, was their observation. You're doing something more and we're not doing those things. And I kept asking, like what? <laughs> you know, and uh, I kept asking, like, what am I doing that you're not doing? Because every everything is written down in the metronome of fact. Everything is written down in three hag way. Everything is probably written down more explicitly on a timeline in metronomics with the critical path that you need to follow. And that was the difference of why metronomics was so important to write down is that I assumed people understood the nuance of the critical path of what needed to be at what level in order to go from a foundation growth phase to a momentum stage, to a compounding phase. And uh, I'm so grateful for the coaches to ask the question because I made the assumption that, yeah, you know, you just, <laughs> you trust the system and you follow the flow. And Metronomics, writing that book gave the opportunity to really be explicit. Almost some people think too explicit, but explicit to the actual levers that must be true in order to grow a company. And 80%, actually, it's more like 96% of companies are never get out of the foundation phase. And that made Metronomics a very different book because it was now, it, it was the first prescriptive growth system. You know, there's other growth systems out there and we'll talk about the differences and uh, maybe a little bit later on, but it was a prescriptive system. You know, it tells you what to do and when to do it. And, you know, after the, after the metronomics came out, the, the 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 phrase started going around: "Just follow the system, just trust the system." Yeah, and a, a lot of people who I spoke to have said, "Well, you know, I'm a, I used to be a scaling up coach, so surely you just take the bits that you want to use and then just you know do those." It's like, no, 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 that doesn't work. Now, there's a reason why it is as it is. It's a prescriptive system. You trust the system and you follow the system. And it might take a little bit longer than it is in the book, or it might be faster. But you know, essentially, you know, we, we don't really, you know, we're not really too bothered about that. It's more a case of let's just trust the system, follow the system, and it will work. And we've done that many, many, many times with many, many, many businesses, and and it and it works. 
But not every CEO wants to follow a prescription. Not every CEO has the discipline to be able to say, okay, what are we doing next? We're doing this next. Uh, they want to do their thing. And uh, for them, metronomics may not work. And it's really, you know, comes down to, and, and you know this and I know this, but for the listeners, uh, it's really about the willingness to evolve your behavior to a specified outcome that you want, right? And that you've tried to get to and you it keeps eluding. <laughs> You're not getting the outcomes you, you want, right? And it's what you want. And many, myself included, I said out loud, you know, we wanted to grow, you know, this global payments company and, and we were stuck. We had done all the right things, but we were stuck and we were stuck in the foundation phase at that time. And we had to figure out how to unlock it. And so the discipline comes and this is why it's actually called the CEO is the metronome because the metronome sets the speed at which you will implement the system. It doesn't have to be done super fast. It doesn't have to be super slow. You get to decide, but you and your team decides to implement this and you have the willingness and the desire to evolve your behavior to the system. And that actually just comes out of, think of your favorite high performance team, sports team. They have a system. There's always a system there. And it's either a repeatable system and the coach has it and they use it with every team they go to the same way, Jed, you use it to go with every team you go to and I use it with every team I go to. Um, and the hardest thing in the book Metronomics was to write the system down because it's so interconnected and there is a critical path that every team flows through. And it's so fun to work with that team when they have the awareness of where they are on their growth journey in the system. It's so fun. So what happens when you have a CEO who doesn't have the willingness and the desire to evolve his or her behavior and also push the leadership team to do the same? What, what happens? You uh, don't implement the system. You actually, as a coach... If I have uh, started working with a CEO who doesn't want to do that, thought it was something else or something different, um, you part ways. You say good luck and a happy journey and all those things. And sometimes they leave and go continue on their way and maybe come back a little bit later and others just continue on their way. And the desire and the, you know, I always say, as you know, you know, I was a desperate CEO. I was a desperate CEO. And it takes someone who wants to actually evolve to do this. Some people don't want to, and that's okay. That is absolutely okay. And we see it in professional sports when you get a really high performing athlete that joins a team who doesn't want to do that system, that system spits them out, actually. <laughs> they usually go play for another team. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. Uh, but that's, that's what happens. It, it all comes from, you know, from what I've learned over time, I wanted to do a system. I needed a system. Not everybody wants that. Not only one has that discipline, nor do they want to do it that way. That's okay. But for those who want to save time <laughs> and money and get to where they want to go with the goals they set, I highly recommend <laughs> this system and uh, working with a coach. And, and that last point is really important. I think that you could, you could get metronomics, you could get the book, you could read it, you could study it. And then as a CEO, you could start applying it in your own business. But there's lots of nuances around having a coach or not having a coach. Now, the, the coach, as, as we often refer to it, is, is the blind spot removed. And CEOs, or they, they have blind spots. Everyone has blind spots. You know, CEOs are people. You know? So not everyone can see all things in front of them or, or behind them. So what would you say to a CEO who wanted to implement metronomics without a coach by themselves? Well... I love that they're taking that step forward 
because I think in some cases I was less impatient than that, but some think, yeah, I got this. I, I can do it. It's all written out here, which it is. In metronomics, every last step, pre-drawing and post, mm. is written out in that book. Um, the the thing that I usually ask a CEO is, when do you want to get there? Because doing it without a coach is going to take you three times as long. And if you want to get there in three years and you want to do it by yourself, it'll probably take you nine to 10 years. That mm -hmm. sounds crazy. But that is the absolute truth of being the blind spot remover. And I don't say that because I'm a coach. I say that because I was coached, right? I got to retire at a very early age, very early stage. I got great success. And it wasn't, wasn't me. It was my coach, my team, the system, right? And I just liked the system. We knew mm -hmm. that it worked well together. So wh when someone goes, yeah, I'm just going to go out on my own, I go, great, go get it going, go learn about it. But they are more likely to understand how to do it faster with a coach than those who have never even tried. Because they mm -hmm. know, they start learning how hard it is to moderate a two-day kickoff. Coach it themselves. It's really hard to be the CEO and the coach in the room. That's a player coach. It's like being on the field and on the sidelines. That's really hard. You can't see the blind spots. Yeah. So you end up facilitating rather than actually participate. Yeah. And, and mm. it's really hard to do. I mean, I, I can tell you, I, I tried that too. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I did that too. It's, yep. it's not the fastest way to get there. Yep. So it takes a lot longer. By definition, time is money. So not only does it take a lot longer, there's, an op there's a missed opportunity and it's going to cost you a lot more. And you know what? When we think about a coach, and you know, I had a conversation earlier today with a young company that has a great growth opportunity and they're looking for a coach. Um, and, you know, they're looking at what they ha how much they have to invest. And, and we talked about not the amount that they're going to invest in a coach. We talked about the, the time that they were willing to invest. Did, did they want to invest three years and get to where they needed to go? Or did they want to invest 10 years? And the difference in the time of the dollars, right? So, you know, um, you know, when we're looking for a coach and CEOs are looking for a coach, it's weighing out that 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 investment dollars over 10 years to get there over investing in a coach and with certainty and predictability getting there sooner thanks for explaining that that's an, that's an important point you know get a coach get a coach yeah i and like yeah that i that's the secret to the success of it all honestly a mm -hmm. ceo plus leadership team coach yeah that's the way yep. to go yep. fourth book yes fourth which will come to the game which we'll come to in a minute. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because that's all that book says. <laughs> Just <joking>. pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a bunch of other growth systems out there. You know, we you know we've yeah. our backgrounds in scaling up, and there's EOS, and there's a great game of business. Now there are all great execution systems, and we pull particular bits out of each of those. You know, and we've we plugged them into into metronomics as as a, as appropriate. But at a higher level, what, what does metronomics have that those other systems don't? And recognizing it's about the and and not the or. Now, you're not going to do just metronomics. You're going to use an execution system. You know, you're going to use a cash system. You know, and, you, you know, it's, it's about the and, not just the or. Yeah, well, the biggest thing for me, having tried all those systems as a CEO back in the day, when we were trying to put it all together, the, the thing that we got so far meaning we got our execution system going, we had our cash system going, we had a little bit of the cultural system turned on, we had a little bit of the other systems turned on. But the thing that was missing was the strategy system connected to the business side, execution and cash, and aligned to the team. And the, the strategy system includes a three-year highly achievable goal, that has your line in the sand out there three years of your fiscal, of your widget, the non-fiscal targets, 
you know, what you're going to be in three years. How are you going to get there? What are you going to be known for? But it was the widgets, that metric, that non-fiscal thing that, you know, connected the team and aligned everyone to where we we're going and allowed us to line up the execution and cash system. That's what was missing in the other systems. And, you know, Jack Stack was with us at Tip Top in 2023 in Whistler, and he was so clear about that, <laughs> that that was missing in his own work. They have a strategy. I'm not saying they don't. It's an incredibly successful company and system, but the system connected to execution and cash was lacking. Scaling up, similar. Uh, EOS, I can say that, yes. Um, uh, EXO, I can say it. Like all the systems that we knew and learned and, and really learned the what and put them into the how of the system. The thing that was missing was really connecting the long term to the near term to the now with the team bought in and absolutely driving towards the agreed upon strategy. It wasn't your top down approach that I learned back in the day of, you know, the CEO had the strategy in their head and they tell you how to, you know, just tell them how to do it. That's, that's not what uh, we're all about. It's a collaborative brain. One brain lines it up, drives the whole bus forward together, connected to the numbers. You mentioned Jack Stack at a, a Whistler last year at the at the summit. Uh, I'm a yeah. huge fan of great, great game of business, and uh, you know his Me his um, his career and his success. It was uh, I remember spending quite a bit of time with him um, over a, a, a Negroni, I think, uh, one evening, yes. and uh, you know he, he was just a, a very very humble man, and uh, you know he could see yes. that the that the metronomics has something that what he built does not. And he was very, very open about that. He was very accepting about it. Yeah. I have to admit, I, I did fanboy a little bit there. <laughs> As I did too. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. was just fantastic to have him join us. It was. That was a, a rare, a rare privilege, a rare privilege. Yes. Okay. So we've gone through the books one by one. So the last book, and, and this might be your last book. We, we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The last book, The M Game. That's a very different book again. Well, it's a different book, but was written for CEOs. And it was written, and then and, and you're probably thinking, well, weren't the other books written for CEOs? They were. But in this case, it was to actually give the CEO an understanding of what it would be like if they had, you know, metronomics, and I've been calling it the Strategic Growth Operating System. And I added in the strategic growth operating system because that's the difference that most CEOs are looking for, that alignment, what it would be like if they had it operating in their business. And there's six CEOs who have lived through it or are currently still living through this strategic growth operating system that we know is metronomics and their live unedited like feedback on what it's like having the system running in their organization. And they're at all different phases of growth. There are some in the foundation phase, there's some in the momentum phase, and there's some in the compounding phase in that book. And it's just describing, you know, the system itself. I love, uh, you know, doing those interviews and reading those interviews, uh, listening to those interviews of the CEOs who were interviewed. Some of them were my clients, some of them were other coaches' clients. Um, it was just really interesting to get their raw feedback back about what it was like putting the system in place. We want CEOs to understand that because you can really, any CEO can find themselves in that book. Like that, that's, that's the feedback I've had. They, they can relate to any one of the stories that are told in the book. And I think also, you know, within there, there's a chapter in there that's not as explicit in metronomics, um, all about the growth phases and the critical path and helping uh, a CEO identify which phase they're in and what they should do next to unlock it, to unlock their growth. And I think that's pretty important. A lot of people give up on unlocking their growth. They just think, oh, it's just going to be like this, which, which is sort of sad. And we, we have another podcast scheduled to go through those three phases of, of, of metronomics. 
uh, in a in a in a week or so. So you know, we'll leave that more detailed conversation to 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 that that session. But but you're right that that chapter there it just lays out that critical path of how you move through the phases. We used to use the term you know the year one, year two, year three, um, yeah. but it's rarely that clean. So phase one, phase two, phase three. It's rarely that clean, and maybe mm-hmm. that was my bad in writing it that way. But we have seen companies go year one, year two, year three, and hold the compounding phase. And it's three years later, and they're still holding the compound phase. So mm-hmm. it's not a fairy tale. Uh, you know, and that company's in the book. And uh, it it works. I mean, my second company was that fairy tale. A lot of people think it is a fairy tale. It's not. It, and the book actually is written to what we experienced in my second company, even though at the time I was still under a bit of an embargo that I couldn't talk about that story mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a long time. I wasn't allowed to talk about that story. Yeah, so they, the M game was written for CEOs to understand what it's like and to really understand what it was like to have a metronomic system working in their business and what it would be like for the CEO. So I encourage, it's a short read, it's 100 pages. You can do it in two hours or less. It's like that simple. Most people read the book and contact us. <laughs> That's how. And I know lots of coaches give that book out and they call them back. Because most CEOs want what's in that book. Well, they they can relate to the experiences. They can relate to the you know the the, the situations and how metronomics solve them. So yes, it's a it's a great book to to bring that home outside of the theory and the, you know the, the 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 prescriptive approach in in metronomics. M game is very different. It talks about the impact it had in those companies in those CEOs' lives. Okay, so we've talked through what is metronomics, and we, you know, we've used that as a, an opportunity to go through the four different books. Uh, so metronomics is a system, but it's also a book. It's the playbook. But what else is metronomics? Yeah, so it's been an interesting journey choosing the the word metronomics, as I said earlier, and making it the title of the book. We had a big discussion about that. From the title of the book, we made it our company name. We made it not only our company name, it's the name of the overall strategic growth operating system. It's also the name of our community of CEOs and coaches. It's also the name of our open playing field, our software platform. Metronomics and why we did that is it is all encompassing. In order to grow your company, you need a community, right? You need a coach. You need an open playing field. You need a playbook. And as a company, we're here to ensure that you make the impact and reach the desired goal that you want. That's why we named it Metronomics. And sometimes it's confusing. I can say that out loud. I say it this way. I say it that way. But at the end of the day, Metronomics is there for the CEO and the team who has a willingness and desire to grow their business and reach whatever goals they've set. And all those pieces help get a team there. The more you use, the faster you'll get there. So metronomics is all about setting the beat. It's all about you know going way, way back to yes. you know metronome effects. You set the beat in the metronome, and then we yes. execute year by year, quarter by quarter, yeah. month by month, yeah. day by day. Building each system up. Sometimes we fall back, and then we go up even higher and fall back a little more and go a little further. But uh, yes, each one of those things are so important to set the beat, and you must have the willingness and desire to set the beat. And you're going to get there faster if you use a coach. Got to say it. Okay, thanks so much, Shannon. That brings us up to time. So thanks so much for your time today. Always love chatting. You know, always have you know, really interesting viewpoints. And uh, you know, thanks for filling in the, the, the couple of gaps uh, as we went through today. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the gaps in my knowledge that I should probably know. So uh, I have some homework to take away from this too. Any final words from you, Shannon? Well, I just want to say how much fun it was being a guest on my own podcast and how grateful I am for you to be working with me on this podcast so we can make an impact and help CEOs and coaches grow. 
uh, very pleased to be part of that. Um, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I love podcasting. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Thank you so much for inviting me on as a host, co-host. Well, you were the host today. <laughs> okay. Well, we should, we should get back to the tip top summit that's happening around us right now. I so. know I can't, I can't wait. We have so many people in town in Whistler, uh, look out for our events as they will come out quarterly over 24, rest of 24 and 25. Can't wait to meet you in person. Yep. Yep. See you downstairs. See you later. Tip top is brought to you by Metronomics. To find out more about Metronomics and how this 20 plus year old proven system will save you time and money as you grow up your business, visit metronomics.com. That is M-E-T-R-O-N-O-M-I-C-S dot com. Also search for Metronomics in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else that great podcasts are found.